Is this on? Okay. Hello, everyone. I'm not even allowed the TV remote control at home, so now I've got the mic. I feel like I'm the king. Uh, so this is from the field to the desk. It's uh, a kind of project run through of what we've done recently for uh, a customer using, uh, it's a mobile data capture project, no surprise, using uh, merging maps as, the, as, the, as part of the, uh, the architecture. Um, my name's Andrew Bailey. I work for Aston Technology. Uh, it's a UK company. Um, and my Twitter handle is, this is so regretful, it's Andy B. Mapman. That's how, kind of okay when I talk to my family. When I'm in front of you guys, it's, it's not good. It sounds like I'm a crap superhero that works in 2D only. Is it? Okay. <laughs> I'm not sure. Uh, is that working? Okay. That's not, that's not working either. Oh, hang on. Did I press the right button? Yeah. Sorry. Uh, so, yes, this is a run through what I want to talk about. Um, so, self host self-hosted merging maps. Um, so this is very much a dummy's guide uh, without the instructions, because the instructions are so good that Lutra have provided. So I just want to talk about, I suppose, the pain points of what we've done uh, for this particular customer. It's uh, set up within an enterprise environment. It's regarding a tree survey uh, project. So there's a QGIS project involved. And whilst we're doing the project, the forest agency uh, in the UK, um, released a, a tree, uh, really specific, an individual tree standard for a survey uh, whilst we're doing this. So there's a, there's a side project to that at the end, which I'll cover, and a bit about the, the grumbles and lessons learned. So, yeah, Aston Technology, we're based in the UK. Um, we're all kind of sitting at home now due to uh, the shock of COVID. Um, we specialize in, obviously, geospatial and metadata consultancy to those who want it. Um, our focus for customers is predominantly government bodies in the UK, and that will include about 60 local authorities, municipals, um, of which this project is about one of them. So our typical customer or common customer is this local authority. Our point of contact for them is sometimes head of IT, or typically the GIS lead uh, for that. In this particular project, uh, that wasn't the case. We were dealing directly with uh, the environmental service department, the tree survey people. They put out the, the piece of work for tender. We caught it and, uh, and delivered. So hopefully you can see a very simple enterprise architecture diagram. At the top, we've got the customer network. At the bottom, we've got our virtual private cloud. Uh, which we host in Amazon AWS. There's no real surprises. We, at the top, we've got a, an ETL piece of software that uses OGR under the bonnet. That pushes data into the spatial data warehouse from internal data connections and so forth. And the customer, the GIS people in, in the organization, they'll access that via QGIS or MapInfo version 8, as it turned out. Um, and they also, we also provide for them for internal use uh, a web GIS with single sign-on, uh, and that will um, they can they can access that. So they can do reporting on that. They can do feature editing, uh, which is quite nice, and they'll read from the spatial data warehouse. So uh, merging, that's uh, in a self-hosted environment. We've plonked it in there. It's an Ubuntu server. Uh, the specs will come up at some point. And the idea is that uh, people out in the field are using 3G uh, on a 3G network. I think I was told they're using iPads, but I can't quite believe that. Um, but anyway, mobile devices of some kind. They'll download the project we've developed, and they go off and do a tree survey, synchronize. That data goes back into the spatial data warehouse uh, via uh, Mergin's DB Sync, which we'll, we'll cover in a minute. And uh, the people in the, um, that are making use of the web GIS, they can, they can see that data as it comes in. And both parties can edit, and uh, those, uh, 
both data set, both the merging project and the spatial data warehouse are kept in, in sync with each other. So yeah, here's, here's a kind of a little bit more detail about the merging server. When you follow the instructions um, on merging maps GitHub, the, the instructions are great. And I had no prior Docker experience uh, to this. If you follow them, you'll end up with uh, three Docker instances, the, the merging, the application, merging DB, which is uh, an internal database, and that just keeps track of uh, users and projects and permissions on those projects. And uh, Redis, which I, I believe is a, a caching uh, function uh, for merging. And you'll also want this DB sync uh, module. So that, um, all that needs is a, uh, it'll work with uh, one project and one geo package in that project. And that will keep sync with one schema in the PostGIS database. So if you've got more than one project, you can have more than one DB sync. So that's continually monitoring um, synchronizations. And on the right-hand side, we've got the, the web GIS. So the people over there, they can edit uh, data as well, and DB sync is, uh, is going to push that back to Mergin's project. Um, what's nice about that is that the the, um, the web GIS can make use of a web processing service for editing. So we've got that plugged into Audience Survey's topographic area master map um, data set. Essentially, it's polygons that cover the UK, if you don't know. And some of those are going to be woodland classified polygons. So they might do a rough drawing of a, of a polygon out in the field. And uh, they'll come back in. They can use the web GIS to replace that or to, to combine it with the, the master map topographic area plugin. And that's just going to be, in the UK talk, it's the, it's the bee's knees. It's the, it's the polygon that they want to capture, really. Uh, also, because they, they want to um, extract information, they want, might want to run reports uh, from the web GIS based upon the trees that they've, they've gathered in the field. Uh, they need to have the images. So when you click on a tree, you'll get uh, information, all the attributes stored about that, plus, uh, plus the image. So we have a Python script that routinely just queries Mergen's API, extracts the entire project, uh, including the images, and then runs another script just to convert those to thumbnails, just to keep down on bandwidth. And uh, I think the next slide just demonstrates Nothing surprising about the, the left-hand side, really. Nothing surprising about the right either. It's just that that's our web GIS. You can see I've clicked on a tree, and up comes the, um, the information about it. And they can further click to see the, the, full, the full picture. Um, this is the, the current server specification we've gone for. The, the project's not currently live at the moment. We're, we're just in the process of signing it off. So we're not entirely clear about the um, uh, their actual demands about the, the we've got an idea of the size of, uh, of the project, but the actual, I think this is probably overkill, but when we have a bit more data about CPU performance, we, we might reduce this. So it's, it's certainly not under qualified to perform its duty. I suppose the good, good advantage about self-hosting is that you can whack on, you know, the, the, the storage size that you want. One of the downsides is that you, um, you have to create the user accounts uh, yourself. So um, actually, this is a bit of an unnecessary slide. Just really a checklist. Uh, that's the URL that you need to go to to get hold of um, the, uh, re the repo. And that includes the fantastic instructions from Lutra about how to get yourself sorted. In this particular project, the, 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 uh, the people out in the field, they're not using a VPN. So we have to open the doors for 443, um, make sure you've got disk space alarms, all the normal stuff, including the necessary site certificate. Um, when you download the repo, the first thing you can need to do is, is look at the, uh, the Docker Compose YAML file. Um, so there's lots of uh, config options in there. I just put some sort of key ones on there. The, the first one that you need to do is, um, is turn off user self-registration. Um, 
the main merging website has that enabled and any user can go on, create an account, and uh, they get allocated some storage space. Well, we don't want it in this case, so we can disable it. Uh, we can also increase the default storage size, that's on a project level, and uh, set up some mail server settings so in case they forget passwords. Um, map your folders to volumes in case uh, everything goes a bit uh, belly up and uh, you have the dockers go, containers go down, you might have to restart them, you don't want to lose uh, all your hard effort. So the, the DB sync is even easier. As I said, it's, it's one container. Uh, it, uh, it's one container, one project, one geo package, one schema. If you have lots of them, then name them accordingly, the container name. You know, uh, ours is called like tree survey, DB sync or something like that because you're going to end up with, you know, however how many projects you've got in your setup, and you'll have DB syncs running for each one. And it just contains merging connection details. In this case, it's localhost, straightforward, uh, the geo package in question, and where is it going to, the PostGIS connection and schema. Uh, so as I said, it's a tree survey project based in the UK. Um, so you, for every... For those who don't know, um, any merging project starts with a QGIS project. Um, so in this case, it's British National, British National Grid. Uh, we use the, uh, the grid file for the conversion between last and long uh, to get the high precision uh, conversion into eastings and northings. That does cause an issue in, in uh, merging uh, maps, the app. Uh, you, you do get an error message. I think Lutra are aware of this. You just skip through it, and you only, you only see it once. So it's not, it's not a heartache. Um, the base mapping is all WMS. It could otherwise be offline, but the guys that we're working with, they've all got grand 3G connections, so they're all good. They're using important surveys, uh, WMS, that we happen to host, but they can also flip to um, aerial WMS using uh, map themes. That one comes from um, Airbus, I believe, as part of their uh, local government agreement. And no surprises, trees are points, woodland areas are polygons. Um, the other thing that they wanted was a, a means of looking up a location. So in Emerging uh, Maps app, you can search against all attributes of all layers. So we put in a, uh, essentially an invisible layer uh, acting as a gazetteer, and that is a data set from the audit survey called OS Open Names. And it's, uh, it's actually really uh, fit for purpose in this case. It has road names, postcodes, and prominent buildings. This particular customer um, does surveys for uh, highways, parks, and particularly schools uh, for insurance purposes. So having the schools listed as prominent buildings is, is a really nice feature. Um, so they can uh, type something in and off they go uh, to the right location. Um, so when you're controlling, um, designing your form, that's going to appear in Mergin. You can make use of these, these widgets in QGIS, which are hopefully that you're all aware of, but uh, they're really great for fine-tuning and making that, uh, that input of data less manual. So the first, the first two I've got here are combo box widgets, so you essentially to create an option box in, in Mergin uh, or QField or, or, or others. Um, there's one called value relation, and that will essentially use a non-spatial table in the project that you can assign uh, as, as the source for that uh, particular field. Um, so tree species is, is the one here that we've got, but because uh, um, it's such a long list. Uh, so that's really useful. If, if it's pouring down in rain, it was raining and you're in the north of England with lightning coming in, you don't want to remember how to spell the Latin name for some spruce tree or something. So um, straightforward. Um, the other option is to use a value map widget, which uh, you can sort of self-define the value. So you, uh, Typically, you'd use that for a smaller selection uh, option, such as you know, the health, bad, good, or medium, that kind of thing, um, and away you go. So the one on the right, value relation, that's obviously linked to the table. If the table changes, then the options change where 
value map is, a, is more of a static one. More widgets, new numbers, dates, photos, multi-line. Multi-line's important for being in the field. Issues experienced. Uh, Multi-polygons crept in somewhere, and that really upsets DB Sync because it's expecting uh, polygons to be in the PostGIS uh, table. So that tripped it up, uh, so we converted all to multi-polygon, and uh, that was fine. Uh, just before I went on holiday to Park Asterix, which I recommend, um, the Redis cache component failed. Uh, I've yet to look at the details, but that happily then resulted in filling up disk, the, the whole disk space. Um, so that's worth um, further investigation, but also put on disk alarms and perhaps Docker monitoring. And the modification of polygons is a bit limited with the app at the moment. You can split into two features, a woodland polygon, then delete one. That's the way that you would fine tune something. Um, so we found the WebGIS quite a useful tool for them. So it was a good workaround. Um, the lessons learned. Uh, really, if we're looking from a sort of a, a, a profit and loss perspective on this project, um, you know, because we're a commercial company, a huge amount of time was spent on uh, communication because this customer isn't a typical one of ours. Uh, normally, we're speaking to a GIS person. They know about primary keys, they know about data types, and um, this team's expertise lay in environmental sciences. So we had, we had to be aware of uh, language and terminology, uh, the differences within them. Uh, but we found that uh, providing personalized documentation, um, though that's quite costly to do, videos, knocking up videos to uh, indicate a solution or a workaround to something, or how to um, uh, you know, show off a feature or something is actually really easy and time effective for, for someone in a consultancy to do. It takes you know, five minutes and it's out the door with documentation and worrying about you know, particular spelling and sentences and all that kind of stuff. It's straightforward. So the end result, um, they are reasonably happy. It kind of goes up and down, to be honest, <laughs> but at the moment they're happy. Um, and they can edit via mobile, uh, WebGIS, or QGIS. They won't, but they like map info. Um, two minutes, right. Uh, and they do see the opportunities for mobile data capture beyond, beyond that. So it's, it's, it's a good example within the authority. And hopefully, we'll see some more uh, projects come in. Um, as I mentioned, the, the forest, re, uh, forest research, they released a standard. Um, uh, uh, was it uh, last year, I think, at some point. Uh, it's all COVID-y. Uh, so I've, I've essentially sort of brought that into a project which is publicly available on the Merging Maps um, site. So if you want to go off that, you can clone it, make use of it. You can download it. You can put it into QField Cloud or other competitor mobile data platforms. And it's based upon, as I say, this individual tree data standard. Resources, I've mentioned before, Merging Maps Docs is a great place to start. Also, the instructions in the repo are faultless. And they also have uh, Lutra provide a, a Slack channel to um, provide assistance. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty grateful for, for them. Uh, and that's it. Thank you to Lutra and thank you to Forest Research. <laughs>